Hello guys, welcome to Unacademy Studios Bridge. I'm Marit Tiwari and I'm going to discuss slope and deflection topic today pertaining to cantilever beams. You see, slope and deflection is a very important topic because most of the times they have asked at least one problem from slope and deflection and sometimes even two. And whenever they have asked the problem from slope and deflection, then 70-80% of the times they have asked problems based on cantilever beams. That's why I have chosen this, to this particular topic to be the very first thing that I discuss in mechanics of solids. Because in mechanics of solids, it is almost a guaranteed topic. Slope and deflection, they have been asking repeatedly and frequently. And in slope and deflection further, They've been asking cantilever beams most of the times, problems based on cantilever beams. Before I go ahead and discuss about the uh, topic itself, let me briefly introduce myself. I'm Marut Tiwari. I did my engineering from Lucknow and I did my master's from IIT Kharagpur. And I have been a recipient of number of prestigious awards uh, at the IIT Kharagpur campus. And I've secured a CGP of 9.63. I've been a topper there. And I've cracked gate multiple times and I'm also an author of a comprehensive gate book that is gate in 75 days. This is one of the best seller books in gate segment gate in 75 days for further information about me. You can just Google me. You can just Google Maruti Wari and you'll get to know all the information about me. Now many students are asking me that why sir, why you have chosen an academy? after you know after teaching after guiding more than 20,000 students so far in traditional classroom coaching programs why i have decided to switch to this digital or online mode because my dear friends this online mode or this digital mode is having a win-win situation is providing a win-win situation for all the scholars all the students all the gate aspirants why because you have a lot of educators lot of educators to choose from like it's your choice you have to watch mr a's lecture or mr b's lecture the freedom is on you the you know flexibility is given to you and then my dear friends so many courses you you can experience for free so many courses are available totally for free like if you have to see a course like so many for courses are available without any cost or something and there are so many other features that I can list. There are so many reasons that I can list that why this is going to be the future of learning. Uh, you have flexible schedule. You have language of your choice. Like I'm today doing the same thing in English that I yesterday did in Hindi. In the previous video, in the previous video, my dear friends, I taught the same thing in Hindi medium. But now I'm going to choose English as a medium for this entire class. So many students demanded for it that uh, particularly my South, South Indian friends, they demanded that because they don't understand Hindi as a medium. So I should better do it in English. So I'm now onwards, I'm going to make every video in Hindi first and then in English. I mean, on the same day, you'll get in both the languages and you can do unlimited practice. Like, you know, there is no restriction that now the class is over. Now what to do? You can rewatch and rewatch and rewatch and rewatch the same thing again and again and again and again unless it it totally gets embedded in your mind. So there are so many things you can learn anytime and anywhere. You can you know it's very convenient. It's very flexible, and at the same time, I mean the, just because it is very convenient and very flexible, it doesn't mean that you don't get a classroom-like environment. You get a total classroom like environment. You can participate in interactive polls. You can ask your doubts. You can ask your queries in the real time. You get the, the responses. All right. On, on our an Academy learning app, if you go for the plus subscription, then you can in the chat box, you can ask your doubt in real time and you can get the response also in real time. So there are so many uh, features out there. We have number of flexible packages available. We have a monthly package subscription package available we have a subscription package available for three months for six months for 12 months and for 24 months the most cost effective packages are the 12 months package and the 24 months package if you go for 24 months package for example the total cost of the package is 40,000 
but since it is for 24 months so effectively it comes down to just 1667 rupees per month and it can be further brought down if you use my code if you use my code empty live then the package cost which is 40,000 will come down to just 36,000 all right if you if you use my code empty live at the time of subscription then you'll get 10% additional discount and the cost of the package will be just 36,000 now 36,000 divided by I'm sorry this is a 24 months package 36,000 divided by 24 is just 1500 rupees now if you compare this with any learning package available anywhere for entire mechanical engineering my dear friends i can claim this that nothing can beat this this is unprecedented 1500 rupees per month and you're good to go you are you are you know having uh, access to so many courses out there from so many educators all right so learning has never been uh, such cost effective such value for money go for it and then then there is 12 months package uh, though there are monthly packages also I mean you can subscribe for one month also or three months or six months but I would rather recommend you to go for a 12 months or 24 months package to go for a 12 months or 24 months subscription why because my dear friends that brings the cost of the package effectively and significantly down and you see you can continuously and consistently without any break you can keep learning so for a 12 months package the package cost is 25,000 if you divide this 25,000 by 12 you get effectively you get to pay just 2,083 rupees per month it's a one-time payment but effectively you can you can see that it's just 2,000 rupees a month it can be further brought down if you use my code empty live then you get 10% additional discount and after getting that 10% additional discount the cost of the package is not going to be 25,000 it comes down to just 22,500 now this is less than 2,000 a month as I said I can claim this that no institute out there can provide such a cost effective and such a value for money package for learning for entire 12 months consistently and continuously it's very easy all you need to do is you need to install an academy learning app go to play store and install an academy learning app now that you must do immediately why because you will get to access so many courses even for free so install it and choose gate as your goal and after choosing gate as your goal you can go for any subscription package out there and after buying the subscriptions bingo you're good to go you are going to have a happy learning all right so this is it let's now go ahead and discuss about all these uh, uh, problems that we have all these types of problems that we have my dear friends cantilever beams slope and deflection in cantilever beams has five type of problems four different types i'm going to discuss now and fifth type i'll make another video for it all right for the fifth type i'll make another video so four different types we are going to discuss here let's start with type one which is standard beams five type of problems are there five type of problems are possible and don't worry i'm going to discuss them one by one one by one each one of them all right so type one problems are based on standard beams now what are standard beams standard cantilever beams we have four possibilities cantilever beam with a couple cantilever beam with a point load cantilever beam with a udl running throughout its span and cantilever beam with a uniformly varying load that has maximum intensity available at the fixed support and minimum intensity is zero available at the free end and then my dear friends we have a fixed support here at one extreme all right we have got a fixed support here at one extreme now the very first thing for these four standard beams the very first thing that you got to remember is for these four standard beams you got to remember number of standard results 
And the very first thing that you got to remember is the maximum bending moment. Now, what is going to be the maximum bending moment for these beams? For this one, maximum bending moment would be M0 because you know you calculate bending moment anywhere and you get the same value. You calculate anywhere and you get just M0, 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 M0 again and again and again and again and again. Every single time you'll get M0 only. All right, and you know, couple should not be multiplied with the distance. So for the very first case, you have the maximum bending moment, maximum bending moment available as M0. For the second one, it is going to be W multiplied by L. For the second one, it is going to be W multiplied by L. For the third one, UDL equivalent will be omega L and it will be available at L by 2. So omega L multiplied by L by 2, this will be omega L square by 2. For the fourth one, it will be omega naught L square divided by 6. Here is a humble request from my side that my dear friends, please, please and please do memorize these results as I write them. As I'm writing these results, please memorize them. Why? Because in type 2, type 3 and type 4 problems, you're going to need all these standard results. The next thing that you got to remember is the maximum possible slope value. Now maximum possible slope will be available exactly where? Let's see it. Just try visualizing each of these beams deflecting because of the load. Because of the load, each of these beams is going to deflect something like this. As the beam is going to deflect, its tangent, my dear friends, its tangent will have some angle with respect to positive x-axis. Its tangent will have some angle with respect to positive x-axis. Something like this. Okay. And this is how we define the slope value. Maximum slope in case of cantilever standard beams, maximum slope is available at the free end itself. Maximum slope is available at the free end itself. And you please remember, you please memorize these maximum slope values as I write them. Please, please and please, it's a humble request. Please memorize these maximum slope values. Maximum slope for the first one would be M0 L divided by EI. For the second one, it is going to be WL square divided by 2 EI. For the third one, it is omega L cube divided by 6 EI. For the fourth one, it is omega naught L cube divided by omega naught L cube divided by 24 EI. The next thing that you got to remember is the maximum possible deflection values, okay? The maximum possible deflection values for these four beams. Now, maximum possible deflection is again occurring at, maximum possible deflection is again occurring at free end, isn't it? And all these four standard cases must be memorized. Believe me, memorizing them will make it very quick for type 2, type 3 and type 4 problems. All right, which we are going to discuss next. So Y max value for the first one would be M0 L square divided by 2 EI. For the second one, my dear friends, it is going to be WL cube divided by 3 EI. For the third one, it is going to be omega L raised to 4 divided by 8 EI. And for the fourth one, it is going to be omega naught L omega naught L power 4 divided by 30 EI. I say it again, please do memorize all these four standard results. As of now, if you cannot memorize entire table, then at least please memorize this Y max column for all these four standard beams. ML square by 2 EI, WL cube by 3 EI, omega L power 4 divided by 8 EI, and omega naught L raised to 4 divided by 30 EI. Please do memorize all these results and also please do remember these maximum bending moment values. But just in case, if you forget these results, just in case if you miss these results out, no need to worry. I'll, I'll tell you a trick. Using that trick, using that trick, my dear friends, you can reproduce, you can recall, you can regenerate all these formulas like a pro. Like within a matter of one minute, yes, all these formulas you can 
reproduce and how you can do this let me let me present the trick let me present the trick in front of you for all these four standard beams cantilever beam with a couple at the free end cantilever beam with a point load at the free end cantilever beam with a udl on the entire span and cantilever beam with a uniformly varying load with a uniformly varying load something like this now my dear friends if you want to produce the theta max values if you want to produce the theta max formulas all you need to do is just write ml by ei ml by ei ml by ei and ml by ei just write ml by ei ml by ei ml by ei and ml by ei that's it it's as simple as that just for all these four beams you write ml by ei ml by ei ml by ei and ml by ei and then my dear friends you need to write 1 2 3 4 producing the theta max formulas is as simple a thing as learning 1 2 3 4 just write 1 2 3 4 and this is amazing why this is amazing because my dear friends if you think about axial loading the deformation formula you write as pl by ea if you think about twisting moment the angle of twist formula you write as tl by gj so here you have something very similar like you think you think about it you'll be amazed with striking similarity that we have here load 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 and then you have length 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 then you have material property material property material property then you have cross sectional property cross sectional property and cross sectional property so you have very similar scenario here isn't it very similar scenario so just memorize them ml by ei and then 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 now you must be wondering that is it really the same formula that i have written in the previous slide in the in the previous board no they are not exactly matching but you can you can reproduce them in just a matter of maybe 10 seconds or something anyone anyone whichever you want to produce let's produce the udl one let's produce the udl one for the udl one we have written theta is equal to ml by 3 ei and for the udl one the bending moment value is for the udl one the bending moment value is omega l square divided by 2 isn't it for the udl bending moment value is omega l square by 2 so let's put this m value here let's put this m value here omega l square divided by 2 and then you have l divided by 3 ei and then l square and l that will become l cube and 2 and 3 this will become 6 so you get omega l cube divided by 6 ei as the theta max value and now you go back and check you go back and match you have same thing here omega l cube divided by 6 ei omega l cube divided by 6 ei and here again you have omega l cube divided by 6 ei similarly my dear friends similarly you can produce the y max formulas for all these cases you can produce the y max formulas so so what is the trick to produce y max formulas to produce y max formulas all you need to do is you just write the corresponding theta values just write the corresponding theta values and then my dear friends once again it's a sequence 1 by 2 2 by 3 3 by 4 and 4 by 5 of course theta doesn't have a unit but y must have the unit of length so just write the corresponding theta values and then 1 by 2 2 by 3 3 by 4 4 by 5 like keep increasing the number all right keep increasing the number and you'll get the y max value for example once again let us produce this udl maximum deflection formula let us try to produce the udl maximum deflection formula for the udl one i have uh, given you the trick 3 by 4 l so 3 by 4 into l and then my dear friends then my dear friends theta value is what for udl for udl theta value just now we have derived here omega l cube by 6 ei 
omega l cube divided by 6 ei and then you have 3 by 4 into l now if you simplify this you'll get omega l raised to 4 if you simplify this you will get omega l raised to 4 divided by 8 ei which is exactly the result that we discussed previously all right so standard beams are something that you must memorize you must remember and you must be able to readily recall them like immediately embed them in your mind so as even if you forget, forget your name but you should not forget these eight formulas so i say it again my dear friends please take a snapshot or something of this slide and make sure that this table is com completely embedded in your mind all right now let me take you to, to the type 2 problems type 2 problems type 2 problems are going to ask you the maximum slope and deflection value with any random combination of loads first of all let me take a very simple example to illustrate that how you can how you can solve such problems if you just remember those four standard cases suppose we have a cantilever beam that is subjected to a udl throughout its span and also a point load all right also a point load and suppose it is given suppose it is given my dear friends that total value of udl is happening to be equal to the value of the point load total value of the udl happens to be equal to the point load value suppose that is provided in the question and we are supposed to find out the maximum possible deflection value for that my dear friends all you need to do is you need to break this beam into two standard beams one the cantilever beam with a point load and another the cantilever beam with a udl running throughout its span as simple as simple as that so you just need to break this beam into you just need to break this beam into two beams and both of them are going to deflect downward here and then you need to calculate y1 and you need to calculate y2 and just superimpose them that's it just superimpose them if you want to calculate maximum possible deflection value then just superimpose this y1 and y2 here but while you are superimposing the things make sure that you are carefully taking and you are carefully considering the sign downward deflection must be treated as negative and upward deflection must be treated as positive all right so both these deflection values are downward so we are going to treat them negative negative and negative now what is the value what is the value so due to point load you know if you recall the result if you recall the standard result that we discussed previously due to point load it is nothing but wl cube divided by 3 ei and due to udl it is nothing but due to udl it is nothing but omega l raised to 4 divided by 8 ei all right now you can replace omega l here as w because that is given in the question so you will have wl cube divided by 3 ei and omega l you can replace as w so you'll have wl cube divided by 8 ei my dear friends you can simplify this further and you'll get the final result i'm not simplifying this further okay i have full faith on you that you can simplify it's a matter of one line so you can simplify it and you'll get the final result now you must be like what the hell this was very simple example we had nothing to do here i deliberately have taken this simple example just to illustrate the concept the concept is that any combination of loads and if you have to calculate maximum slope and maximum deflection then my dear friends any combination of loads and you have to always break the beam into number of standard beams and it can be done with a little bit of smartness and with a little bit of trick here and there it can be done and this was indeed a very simple example let me take a typical one let me take a typical one where my dear friends in these type 2 problems suppose we have suppose we have as a second problem as a second example let me take a typical one suppose we have a cantilever beam 
and the load is not acting at the free end the load is acting somewhere in the middle all right and let's say this distance is a and this distance is given to you as a small b now this beam is very certainly not looking like a standard beam this beam is very certainly not looking like a standard beam so you must be like how do we break break it how do we crack it sir it can be done it can be done and it can be very easily done let me let me tell you why because my dear friends this beam is going to deflect something like this from p to q it will have some curvature but from q to r it is going to have from q to r it is going to have no curvature it is going to have straight segment why because from q to r there is no bending and if there is no bending from q to r there is no bending if there is no bending the beam is not going to bend the beam will remain straight and that is a good news why because my dear friends if the beam remains straight there then you can very clearly see that this y at r which is representing y max can be written as y at q y at q plus this particular height plus this much height i'm talking about this height all right this height so y at r can be very clearly written as because that segment is a straight line so it can be written as y q plus h now how is that going to solve your problem how is that going to make your problem easy well that's very simple thing why because now h can be written as if you focus at this particular triangle let me let me uh, just color this triangle here i'm talking about this triangle if you if you think about this yellow shaded triangle then my dear friends you can very clearly write this h divided by b as what as tan theta at q this is theta at q this is theta at q isn't it so this is theta at q and you can write h divided by b is equal to tan theta q now th tan theta and theta they are the same things because in real practical beams we don't have so much of slope value so roughly approximately we can write tan theta simply as theta so we can write h is equal to b theta q here we can write h is equal to b theta q isn't it now y q and theta q y q and theta q you can write by treating this p q length as a standard beam by treating this p q length only this p q length you think about that p q length and that p q length will look like a standard beam itself that p q length my dear friends will look like a standard beam and for this standard beam you already know the results you already know the results results are wl square by 2ei and the second result is i mean the y result is y max value is i'm sorry y max value my dear friends is given as wl cube divided by 3ei so for pq length i mean if you just focus at this pq length you can still use the standard reserves and if you use these standard reserves here if you use these standard reserves here then you get y max value as what as yq yq you can write from here wa cube divided by 3ei plus b into theta q theta q you can write as wa square divided by 2ei so as i said even if the beam doesn't look like a standard beam believe me guys it can always be broken into a combination of a standard beams you can always break any prismatic cantilever beam can always be broken into a combination of standard beams and after you break it into a combination of standard beams then you can use your standard reserves in some another video i'll solve more such problems where I'll, i'll take more typical cantilever problems and i'll i'll show this to you that how i'm breaking them every single time how i'm breaking them into standard beams let me now go ahead and discuss with you 
the third type of problems the third type of problems my dear friends as far as cantilever beams are concerned the third type of problems are where my dear friends they will ask you the slope and deflection value at some intermediate point they will ask you the slope and deflection value at some intermediate point for example let me take again a simple example let's say we have this beam pr but suppose that the exa examiner is interested at this point q here which is available at 2l distance from p and l distance from r and suppose we have to calculate deflection at q or maybe the slope at q suppose we don't have to calculate maximum slope and maximum deflection suppose we have to calculate this deflection at some intermediate point all right in such problems there is a simple trick that is going to help you my dear friends whenever they ask you to calculate in cantilever beams whenever they ask you to calculate slope and deflection at some intermediate point then all you need to do is you need to delete you need to delete the beam that is on the free side of the point of interest this q point is point of interest for us and you need to just delete the beam that is on the free side of that point of interest and transfer all the loads to that point of interest but please please and please don't try to apply this trick in any other type of beams this trick is going to work only in cantilever beams that two pure cantilever beams a typical cantilever beam that has one fixed support and one free side all right this trick is not going to work in any other type of beams please do not exercise this please do not use this trick in any other type of the beam please please and please okay why this works in cantilever beam i will not go into the background i'll just tell you that whenever you have to calculate slope and deflection at some intermediate point then all you need to do is my dear friends just delete the beam that is on the free side and transfer everything to that point of interest so let's do this let's delete this much beam and let's transfer everything to point q i'm deleting that q to r beam and i'm transferring everything to this point q if i transfer everything to this point q i'll get two effects here number 1 the load itself and number 2 w into l the couple mind it i've deleted this part and now you see this is once again a combination of two standard beams this is once again a combination of two standard beams you have you have a point load and you have a couple and you can see very clearly that it's deflecting downward and it's also deflecting downward so just superimpose everything just superimpose everything yq my dear friends is going to be this is 2l and this is again 2l yq is going to be yq due to load yq due to concentrated load and then yq due to this concentrated couple so once again i'm using the superposition then yq due to the load is going to be what yq due to the load is going to be w into length cube divided by 3 ei and yq due to the couple is going to be yq due to the couple is going to be what m not l square divided by 2 ei and then my dear friends then 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 you just use minus sign why minus sign because both the beams are getting deflected downward in both the beams you are having the deflection downward and downward isn't it then you can put the m not value m not value is nothing but w into l m not value is nothing but w into l and you can simplify this m not value you can put as w into l and you can simplify to get the final result so whenever you have to calculate the slope and deflection at some intermediate point then all you need to do is just delete the beam which is on the free side of that intermediate point and transfer everything to that point of interest and then it will be easily broken down into standard beams now let me take you to the type 4 problems type 4 problems my dear friends are going to be indeterminate problems type 4 problems are going to be 
indeterminate problems all right now let me take an example to quickly help you understand to quickly help you understand that what do i mean by indeterminate problems like in a cantilever you have a fixed support but the other side is free but now suppose i introduce on the other side also i introduce a support a roller support and then there is certain load here then there is certain load you can take udl uvl point load or couple or whatever all right N now my dear friends you see you have if this point is q and this point is p then you have some reaction here rq and you'll have some reaction here rp and you'll also have some couple or moment resistance which is mp all right so we have three unknown reactions now just in case if you already know about it good for you if you don't know know it from today that a fixed support doesn't have just a force reaction a fixed support also has a moment reaction because about a hinge moment is not resisted about a hinge if you hold something on hinge then it is free to rotate like this it is free to rotate like if i'm holding it as a hinge support then it is free to rotate it is going to rotate like this but if i'm taking a fixed support then no matter how much load you apply it is not going to rotate anymore so at a fixed support my dear friends the resistance to moment will also be present and therefore at a fixed support force reaction will also be present and moment reaction will also be present so we have how many reactions how many unknown reactions here we have three unknown reactions here rp is there rq is available and mp is available but if you think about equilibrium conditions if you think about equilibrium equations or equilibrium conditions my dear friends we have just two equilibrium equations sigma fy is equal to 0 and sigma m is equal to 0 what about sigma fx is equal to 0 well there is no load in x direction so what the hell are you going to balance like nothing there is nothing absolutely nothing in x direction so we have just two equilibrium conditions available but we have three number of unknowns rp rq and mp three and un three unknowns are there obviously these two equilibrium conditions will not be sufficient to solve these three unknowns and that's why we call such beams as indeterminate beams in here stands for insufficient and determinate means to determine so when equilibrium is insufficient to determine the things when equilibrium is insufficient to determine the things my dear friends we call such beams as indeterminate beams this particular indeterminate that uh, indeterminate beam that i have demonstrated just now is known by the name is known by the name propped cantilever this one is known by the name propped cantilever all right and this extra support is known by the name prop this special beam is known by the name propped cantilever and this extra support that we have used here this extra support my dear friends is known by the name prop all right now let me take an example to help you understand how to solve them it's very easy to solve them apart from equilibrium apart from equilibrium my dear friends you will need additional equation and that additional equation is known by the name compatibility equation so in propped cantilever beams and by the way they have asked propped cantilever beams multiple times in gate so in propped cantilever beams you need to use a compatibility what is compatibility compatibility is that because you have introduced an extra support here at q so at q there is no deflection allowed at q there is no deflection allowed any more let me solve a gate problem let me solve a problem that they asked in gate for two marks this problem they asked in gate for two marks they they said that you have a propped cantilever beam something like this and that propped cantilever beam is subjected to a udl throughout they asked the reaction values first of all you are always going to use the compatibility condition in such beams in a propped cantilever beam problem you will never start with equilibrium conditions okay you first of all you use compa compatibility condition 
so what is the compatibility condition compatibility condition is what compatibility condition is that my dear friends earlier when you think about a simple cantilever it must have deflected here it must have deflected here but by introducing this prop by introducing this extra support you are killing that deflection you are making that deflection zero so compatibility condition says that now there is no deflection allowed at q sometimes they might give you a little clearance like 1 mm then you need to equate yq to 1 not 1 actually minus 1 why because if downward is allowed minus 1 you'll equate yq to minus 1 if upward is allowed you'll equate yq to plus 1 so i repeat once again this is a very important thing that you must keep in mind that sometimes my dear friends they might give you a little clearance here little clearance here let's say delta then compatibility condition will be yq is equal to minus delta if downward deflection they are allowing if they are allowing upward deflection it will be equated to plus delta so okay we have yq is equal to zero now how do we express yq here to express yq my dear friends once again we are going to consider this beam as a combination of two beams we are going to consider this beam as a combination of two beams one the cantilever with udl and another the cantilever with rq as a point load cantilever with rq as a point load let's call this beam one and let's call this beam two now beam one is very clearly going to deflect downward beam one is going to deflect downward but as you can see beam two is going to deflect due to this rq beam two is going to deflect upward isn't it beam two is going to deflect upward so y1 you will write as negative but y2 you will write as positive just superimpose these two results just superimpose these two results that yq can be written as yq for the first beam and then yq for the second beam but compatibility says that net yq must be zero now yq at the first beam is going to be what for the first beam it is going to be omega l raised to 4 divided by 8 ei and this is a downward deflection for the second one it is wl cube by 3 ei for the second one it is wl cube divided by 3 ei all right now if you simplify this you'll get rq value as if you simplify this you'll get rq value as 3 omega l by 8 and that's how you get two marks all right so my dear friends whenever you get whenever you get a propped cantilever beam my dear friends you have to use compatibility condition without using compatibility condition you will not be able to solve such beams now you will say what about rp in mp just in case if they are asking those values also then now you can balance the forces you can balance the moments to get those values so these uh, have been four different type of problems of course i'm not claiming that you'll become a pro just by you know watching this session but of course if you practice some more problems practice some more and more and more and more and more problems then my dear friends you will certainly become a pro at solving any type of cantilever beam problems i just hope that you enjoyed the session as much as i i did and i just hope that this has been you know in some regards it has been beneficial for you it has been a value for your time thank you so very much for watching this entire session and uh, whatever you want from strength of materials theory of machines engineering mechanics machine design and fluid mechanics these five subjects just keep demanding it like you know just demand it in comment section and uh, whatever whatever topic you're demanding more i'll make a video for that particular topic of all these four or five subjects engineering mechanics strength of materials theory of machines machine design and fluid mechanics okay of all these uh, uh, four or five subjects you demand for any topic i'll make a video for that for that particular topic or maybe if you want specifically uh, focus on problems and type and variety of problems of any particular topic just write in the comment section because i'm looking at all the comments and i'm you know going to consider 
every single feedback yesterday some students demanded english and today we came up with an english session all right and now onwards whatever i'll whatever i'll make i'll make both like one video in hindi and one video video in english thank you so very much once again before you wind it up just make sure that you like the video and you like the video and you also hit the bell icon so that you keep getting the notifications whenever whenever my videos are uploaded and subscribe for the packages using my code mt live to get 10% additional discount thank you very much once again